What's up, NR320? I'm here to introduce you to me and Cameron's video project. There are multiple ways to calculate the discharge of a stream, one of those being velocity area method, which is what we demonstrate in this film. So sit back, relax, and enjoy. For this video, we will be demonstrating the velocity area method of measuring stream discharge. First, we found a straight stretch of stream with minimum turbulence. Make sure the river is weightable. Next, we remove obstacles for flow. Throw it, throw it. Yeah. <laughs> for the velocity area method, you'll be needing a tape, clamps, two stakes, a hatchet, a depth rod with a velocity meter attached. Then we secure the tape across the width of the stream. Divide your width into a number of vertical sections that represent 5% of the width. At each section, measure velocity and depth. Be careful not to stand upstream of the velocity meter, as that might obstruct the flow. Because our stream width was 13 and a half feet, we took depth and velocity measurements every half foot. A half foot is roughly 5% of 13.5 feet. This is our station, depth, and velocity data that we collected into a chart. The discharge at each section was determined by multiplying the section width of 0.5 feet by its depth and velocity. The total stream discharge was determined as the sum of each of these calculations. For convenience, we used Excel for our calculations. After entering our data and applying the previous formula, our calculated stream discharge came out to be 2.0255 cubic feet per second. Wow, what a great video. I would also like to add that Cameron and I believe that the velocity area method is the best method when calculating the discharge of a stream. So if for whatever reason you're, you have to calculate the discharge of a stream, which follow the steps in this video and I guarantee you'll be happy with your results.